I'm going to attempt to read another poem tonight. This is not going to be easy because I am in an incredible lot of pain. <laughs> I was completely stupid this week with my back. Um, kind of was feeling so good that I thought, you know, oh, I really got away from that car accident with no injury and it's not true. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's it's intense right now. So, uh, but I'm going to attempt to read a poem anyway. And uh, so I hope I do okay. I think I found a poem depressing enough for the amount of pain I'm in. <laughs> it's by Jane Kenyon, and it's called Having It Out with Melancholy. So, here goes. <clears throat> it starts with a quote from um, Chekhov, the cherry orchard. If many remedies are prescribed for an illness, you may be certain that the illness has no cure. Part one from the nursery. When I was born, you waited behind a pile of linen in the nursery, and when we were alone, you lay down on top of me, pressing the bile of desolation into every pore. And from that day on, everything under the sun and moon made me sad, even the yellow wooden beads that slid and spun along a spindle on my crib. You taught me to exist without gratitude. You ruined my manners toward God. We were simply here to wait for death. The pleasures of earth are overrated. I only appeared to belong to my mother, to live among blocks and cotton undershirts with snaps, among red tin lunchboxes and report cards and ugly brown slipcases. I was already yours, the anti-urge, the mutilator of souls. Two bottles. Elevil, Ludamil, Doxapin, Norpramin, Prozac, Lithium, Xanax, Welbutrin, Parnate, Nardil. The coated ones smell sweet or have no smell. The powdery ones smell like the chemistry lab at school that made me hold my breath. Three, suggestion from a friend. You wouldn't be so depressed if you really believed in God. Four, often. Often I go to bed as soon after dinner as seems adult. I mean, I try and wait for dark. In order to push away from the massive pain in sleep's frail wicker coracle. Five, once there was light. Once in my early thirties, I saw that I was a speck of light in the great river of light that undulates through time. I was floating with the whole human family. We were all colors who are living now. Those who have died, those who are not yet born. For a few moments, I floated completely calm. I no longer hated having to exist. Like a crow who smells hot blood on asphalt, you came flying to pull me out of the glowing s stream. I'll hold you up. I'll never let my dear one sink. After that, I wept for days. Six. In and out. The dog searches until he finds me upstairs, lies down with a clatter of elbows, and puts his head on my foot. Sometimes the sound of his breathing saves my life. In and out. In and out. A pause. A long sigh. 7. Pardon. A piece of burned meat wears my clothes, speaks in my voice, dispatches obligations haltingly or not at all. It is tired of trying to be stout-hearted, tired beyond measure. We move into the monamine oxidase inhibitors. Day and night, I feel as if I'd drunk six cups of coffee. But the pain stops abruptly with the wonder and bitterness of someone pardoned for a crime she did not commit. I come back to marriage and friends, to pink-fringed hollyhocks, 
come back to my desk, my books, and my chair. 8. Credo Pharmaceutical wonders are at work, but I believe only in this moment of well-being. Unholy ghost, you are certain to come again. Coarse, mean, you'll put your feet on the coffee table, lean back, and turn me into someone who can't take the trouble to speak, someone who can't sleep, or who does nothing but sleep, can't read, or call for an appointment for help. There's nothing I can do against your coming. When I awake, I am with thee. 9. Wood Thrush High on Nardal and June light, I wake at four, waiting greedily for the first note of the wood thrush. Easeful air presses through the screen with the wild, complex song of the bird, and I am overcome with ordinary contentment. What hurt me so terribly all my life until this moment? How I love the small, swiftly beating heart of the bird singing in the great maples. It's bright, unequivocal eye.